The Aristocats was the first Disney film made after Walt Disney's death, and unfortunately, it was hardly of the same standard set by the previous feature-length cartoons. To be frank, there is only one good thing about this film. Besides the song "Everybody Wants to Be a Cat," of course, and having famous French singer Maurice Chevalier perform during the opening credits is quite special. And I hear Uncle Waldo has a large fan base. The dogs, Napoleon and Lafayette. Wait, isn't that technically two positives? <laughs> Napoleon and Lafayette are quintessential comic relief. They enter the film, give us a few laughs, and then leave again. Though to be more accurate, the film does in fact enter them. It is at this point I would like to remind viewers that this film is in no relation to the infamous joke of the similar title. This film was about a wealthy old lady in ye old gay Paris who decides to leave all her money to Duchess, her cat, and her three kittens. Edgar, her butler, is outraged as he will have to wait for them to die before he can inherit a penny. So one night he stuffs the cats into a basket and drives out of the city with the aim of disposing them. How we don't get a chance to learn. As suddenly he finds himself attacked by two dogs, which results in the basket falling off the bike during the chase. The rest of the film follows the cat's adventure as they try to get back to their owner. Part of the fun is knowing that these two characters have serviced the plot by helping our protagonists to escape, and yet they themselves are completely oblivious to said aiding. Napoleon is the bloodhound, and Lafayette the basset hound. Two breeds of dog known for having great hunting skills and for being very droopy. It is not revealed whether they are stray dogs or whether they belong to the farmer of the field they are supposedly guarding, but the fact they give no reference to their boss and the unlikeliness that a farmer would allow his pets to wander around large fields all night gives more support to the idea they are strays. The duo treat anyone who dares disturb or approach them as trespassers, and see them off with much barking and snarling, which does not prove very effective during their encounters with Edgar. Most of the banter between the two is your standard pompous officer paired with a rather lazy jokester. Sound the attack! <laughs> That's mess call. <laughs> Made a mess of it, huh? Cracking army-related puns that will almost definitely go over the heads of the children. In Lafayette's defence of being a few biscuits short of a full tin, the three times we see the duo, they are being woken up in the middle of the night. So it is possible he is much more alert during the day. Those of you with a basic knowledge of life will know that Napoleon is suitably named after Napoleon Bonaparte. The Emperor of France during the early 19th century, whose armies battled their way across most of Europe, and thanks to his distinct look, has been ridiculed by all ranges of media ever since. Lafayette is named after another famous Frenchman, Le Marquis de Lafayette, who helped the Americans during the War of Independence against the British during the 18th century. That's right, America. A Frenchman helped you win your silly little revolution. So start showing some respect. Hush your mouth. Napoleon's nasally southern voice was provided by Pat Buttram, best known for playing a recurring character in the sitcom Green Acres. For the record, Buttram changed his first name from Maxwell to Pat. Clearly, he made the right selection. In the Disney universe, his voice can be heard in Robin Hood, where he was a wolf; The Rescuers, where he was a drunk rat; and The Fox and the Hound, where he was another dog. He was also a talking bullet in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, a film co-owned by Disney. Lafayette was voiced by George Lindsay, most famous for playing Goober Pyle in the popular 1960s sitcom The Andy Griffith Show. 
Lindsay's much less distinct by comparison voice can be heard in other Disney films as minor characters. Okay, let's charge. <coughs> Wait a minute. Now, for authenticity, since the characters in this film are supposed to be French, instead of using clips from the English dub, I'll be substituting that with dogs barking. <coughs> <laughs> oh, Jeffrey, you're such a prat. Eighteen minutes into the film, Edgar has drugged the cats with sleeping pills, put them in a basket, which he places inside the sidecar attached to his motorbike, and rides off into the night. And one crossfade later, he and his backfiring bike are in the depths of the countryside. Lafayette! Hey, Lafayette! Lafayette! Well, I'm right here! So here is our introduction to the inept hounds, and also their three running gags. Lafayette's long ears getting in the way, <coughs> Napoleon's super detailed hearing, It's a motorcycle. Two cylinder, chain drive, one squeaky wheel. They're Oxford shoes, size nine and a half. What color are they? Now, how would I know that? And this memorable catchphrase. I'm the leader. I'm the one that says when we go, I'm the leader. I'll decide what it was. Charge! <laughs> Edgar swerves to avoid the dogs and ends up plunging straight into a river. <laughs> The next minute and a half is basically pure comedy. So you know what that means? I hate myself for using that music. Especially since the music composed by George Bruns really amplifies the excitement of the sequence. The chase transforms the dogs into anthropomorphic beings as Napoleon chooses to push the sidecar rather than just run after Edgar, which they could do at twice the speed. Rejecting Lafayette's desire to make him his chew toy, Edgar gets back on the bike and... Wait a minute... Edgar was standing on the bike to the right of the dogs, and now he and it are on the left. Also, Napoleon was pushing the one-wheeled sidecar, and now he is sitting inside it with Lafayette. That never would have happened under the old management. Excuse me, sir. The dinner. Another debatable topic, if you are someone like me who takes this trivial bollocks seriously, is whether our flea-ridden sidekicks are neutral good or neutral bad. Obviously, as they stop Edgar from harming the cats, even unintentionally, they can be regarded as good guys. Boys dogs, but the fact they will attack anyone who bothers them, and considering our heroes are cats, raises the question as to whether they are anti-heroes or not. Oh, I get blamed for everything. Later, Edgar boasts to a horse that the police are describing the catnapper as a genius. Really? Oh, they won't find a clue to implicate me. Suddenly realising that in some random field, 
There are four clues that would implicate him. Edgar proclaims in the most flamboyant way possible that tonight he will retrieve them, without giving any mention to the two canines who caused him to lose them. Making the audience fear they may never see the dogs again? Oh, Edgar, you sly old fox. That's a line from the film. So that night, armed with a fishing rod, Edgar heads back to the farm. Yeah, maybe you can use the inheritance money to finally learn how to drive and repair that damn thing. And so after being out of the film for nearly 30 minutes, Napoleon and Lafayette appear once again. To make Edgar's job difficult, Napoleon is sleeping in the sidecar and wearing his bowler hat, and Lafayette is sleeping in the basket, obviously not bothered by the amount of cat hair it surely would contain. Whenever I go on a secret mission, I always wear my favourite pair of squeaky shoes. Oh shucks, Napoleon, that ain't nothing but a little old cricket bug. It's squeaky shoes. Oh, cricket bugs don't wear shoes. Hush your mouth. Step on the rake, step on the rake, step on the rake, step on the... Oh, you're no fun. <sighs> Once the dogs go back to sleep, Edgar hides in the haystack behind them and starts to fish for that which is his. The implications of this are... What's going on? Wait a minute. Where's my hat? Where? And somebody stole my bumper shoot. Bumper shoot. I'm going to buy an umbrella just so I can refer to it as a bumper shoot. Well, where's my baby by basket? And whoever it is, is gonna get it and get it good. <laughs> this time, I get the tender part. Hush your mouth. I've just realized, Edgar also lost his shoes during the chase. I suppose the dogs must have buried them. They certainly didn't eat them, otherwise they'd be hiccuping squeaks. And crapping laces. <laughs> Okay, no. Lafayette can barely keep his body off the ground, so how could he have not seen those shoes? They are right in front of him. I got a feeling this case is gonna bust wide open. <laughs> He sneaked up behind me and tailgated me. Well, he didn't hurt me. He hit me on the head. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. Listen. Sounds like a one-wheel... A one-wheel what? You're not gonna believe this, but it's a one-wheel haystack. Another chase ensues, only a much, much shorter one, and Edgar manages to escape, leaving the two dogs, who are possibly too distracted by the temptation to find a needle in the hay, crash into a farm cottage, which apparently has no door. <laughs> I guess you can't win them all. Ow! Ooh, ooh, ooh! Crime of Nidalee! I'm starting to think George Lindsay wasn't even attempting a French accent. At the end of the film, all the animals have gathered in the mansion to sing a reprise of Everybody Wants to Be a Cat. Everybody wants to be your cat. Everybody, everybody. We then rejoin Napoleon and Lafayette, who are somewhere very blue. That sounds like the end. Wait a minute, I'm the leader? I'll say when it's the end. <clears throat> it's the end. I would complain that that was all reused animation, but then I'd have to do this. <laughs> and 
and that would be a complete waste of my time. Oh, yeah. Well, the Aristocats may have finished, but is that the last we'll see of Napoleon and Lafayette? Currently, yes. As you can easily find out for yourselves thanks to the internet, the Aristocats was going to get a direct-to-video sequel sometime around 2006. But the project was cancelled, and a good thing too, as according to the plot summary, Napoleon and Lafayette were not going to make an appearance. While the kittens certainly have been marketable, as for our dogs, I'm afraid the closest you'll find are toys of Trusty from Lady and the Tramp. At least Disney chose to highlight them on the DVD cover, never mind. So whether you find Napoleon and Lafayette funny or not, they do shine in the most entertaining... One of the most entertaining parts of the Aristocats. That's my hat, I'm the leader. Plus, aside from only taking up a total nine minutes of screen time, they spend most of that either mute or snoring. On the other hand, if you do like the characters, then this is unfortunate, as the duo do spark up an otherwise dull way of keeping your children preoccupied for an hour and ten minutes, unless you are really into this style of realistic animation. And cats. This is Jeffrey with a moustache saying... I guess this is the end of the video. Wait a minute, I'm the boss, I'll say when this video is over. The video is over. These Nigel cameos are becoming a tad contrived.